Hey, what's up? Gleb Alexandrov here for creativeshrimp.com. If you have ever tried composing reference boards for any kind of creative work like 3D modeling, you know that this stuff can take time uh, that you could spend elsewhere. So today I want to talk about Pure Ref, my favorite absolute top one tool for viewing and organizing reference images. Uh, so let's jump straight in and take a look at some features that make me really, really happy. First of all, if you want to follow along, feel free to visit pureref.com, download, you can name your price and you can download it for free, obviously, because it's a free tool. So once you download it and launch it, you will see this gray screen and now we can have some fun. The first feature of pureref that I love is a drag and drop functionality. I think it's something that is uh, pretty much expected from a modern piece of software, but we can drag and drop images straight in and they get arranged in a nice grid. And obviously we can drag and drop as many images as we like. In this sense, it's not the same as using image editing tool for creating mood boards or reference boards because you don't have to care about image resolution and stuff like that. Okay, other than drag and dropping images, we can make a snapshot using print screen in Windows, for example, and then go control V and that will paste the image into pure ref, which is also very handy. So maybe you want to document a process and share a bunch of screenshots and you can press print screen and then control V. Uh, it may come in handy, for example, if you watch a movie and you want to make a few screenshots here and there when you see a nice composition or whatever. So you just make a snapshot, uh, then head back over to pure ref and hit control V to paste. Easy peasy. I use it all the time for doing composition studies from movies and stuff like that. But no matter how you acquired the original images, you can still load them up into pure ref, and that versatility makes me really happy. And by the way, this is Blade Runner. The composition in each frame is spot on. Mm -hmm. And finally, the third way of getting images into pure ref uh, is drag and dropping from the browser window. Just like that, you Google some images and you can start drag and dropping and creating your reference board. That's pretty darn amazing. And now let's explore the second feature of PureRef that makes me happy, which happens to be navigation. We can press the right mouse button to drag the PureRef window wherever we like, resize it however we like or make it full screen, Alt and left mouse button to pan around, or if you are in the full screen mode, you can just keep pressing right mouse button to do that. And throughout the process we see no borders and no buttons. Woo! You can hit space to frame the selected image just like that. Or alternatively, you can select a bunch of images and hit space to frame them all. It's just a quick way of organizing the canvas a little bit and navigating around. Just click and hit the space bar. Doo -doo -doo -doo. The other aspect of uh, organization and ergonomics is how you can arrange the images in PureRef. Basically, what we can do to help reduce visual entropy is uh, hit right mouse button, go images, arrange, and we will see a bunch of options like arrange by addition, that will put the images in chronological order, or you can arrange by name and stuff like that. The arrange options are pretty cool when you want to establish some kind of visual hierarchy by making some images larger, but at the same time you don't want to disorganize the canvas too much. So you click and drag to select all images, and then go images, arrange, optimal, and PureRef will try to line them up in some kind of a grid. And to equalize the size of the images, you can use the normalize uh, option, normalize them by height or by size, and then go and, for example, align them left and top. That will do the trick. Alright, folks, uh, the third major pro of PureRef is that it is resolution agnostic. Uh, that makes it so different to the classical ways of building the reference boards, like uh, composing a bunch of images in the image editing tool, then saving a PNG or whatever, because no matter how many images you throw at it and how high resolution these images will be, and you can literally have hundreds of them and you will still be able to zoom in and see them in uh, their original resolution, in the full resolution. For example, if you have uh, some 20k references among others, you will be really able to zoom in uh, to 100% of their resolution. Simply speaking, while ergonomics and drag and drop features are nice, this one is a real killer feature that ripples through the entire workflow of gathering and organizing images, I would say. Oh, and here we see the screen grabbing software. Hello, the fourth wall. Look at you, you're really broken. 
So this was full resolution and the next one on our list is quick image editing. So if you want to do some quick fixes, you can do it right within PureRef without going back and forth between software. For example, uh, Ctrl Alt to resize, Shift to constrain the movement axis to X or Y, Hold Ctrl for rotating the image and Ctrl Shift for incremental rotation. The next one is Alt Shift. You can hold it and then click and drag from left to right and right to left to flip it horizontally and you can also flip it vertically. I use it quite often, and uh, the tool that I use most often uh, is the crop tool. Let me show you how it works. Uh, so you just press C, and while you hold C, you can crop the images. But first I'm going to tilt this image a little bit, and then I'm holding C, and look at this. Ooh, we can crop the images right there. Uh, this is a huge time saver. Imagine for a second that we had to use like GIMP or Krita for cropping our reference images. We would have to find the image, open it, uh, find the crop tool, crop the image, export it back, so on and so forth. And uh, if for some reason you aren't happy with the cropping, you can go images, selection, reset cropping, and it will roll it back. Right, what we can also do is desaturate the images, or rather uh, make them grayscale. Go over to images selection, toggle grayscale, or just press Alt G to toggle between grayscale and RGB modes. And we can do it for the entire canvas by going to canvas, grayscale, or press Alt Shift G. Maybe you want to check the tonal values of the images for whatever reason, and you don't want to get distracted by the color, and that's great. You just activate the grayscale mode, and obviously it works wonders with the default Blender 50 Shades of Grey user interface. And it works, you guessed it, even better if you can dock it on the second monitor and see it up front all the time. Uh, that, that is probably way to go if you have second monitor. What I also love doing when I have the second monitor available, I like to tilt it uh, vertically. But when I don't have the second monitor available, I know that I can always put the PureRef window on top of every other window. I will show it in a second. But for now, let's try to mimic the image editor look of Blender by resizing the PureRef window and putting it over there. But obviously, when you start working on the cube, the window is gone. And to instruct it to stay always on top, you can go Mode and enable Always on Top checkbox. That will just pin this window and you will be able to have it open all the time. In my opinion, that is the second best killer feature of PureRef. And don't get me wrong, there are some other ways of keeping the windows on top of other windows. Uh, but this way seems to me like the most simple one. And you can go ahead and proceed with your modeling while having the reference in front of you. Woohoo! Number 7. Control Opacity. We can use the Control key and minus and plus on the numpad to control the opacity of the canvas. Again, that may come in handy if you want to work from reference, and maybe you want to line it up like this, but even when it's transparent, uh, the PureRef window will still consume the mouse input, so you need to enable Transparent to Mouse feature to tell it to stop receiving the mouse events, but be careful, once you enable it, uh, there will be no way back. Or rather, you will have to use uh, the Ctrl T hotkey yet again. But first, you will have to click on the icon in the taskbar, so it can be a little bit tedious. That's why I'm a little bit cautious about recommending this feature, uh, but when you need it, it's there. It's pretty good for modeling from reference. So, number 9. Shortcuts. If you are by chance the Blender user, you probably love hotkeys and you will feel at home, because PureRef has a wide selection of hotkeys, from Ctrl F to going full screen, to Ctrl Shift A to make it stay on top of every other window, and like we mentioned, Ctrl minus and plus to increase or reduce the opacity of the canvas, Ctrl Alt G to turn on the grayscale mode, and stuff like that. By the way, if you want to learn more about PureRef hotkeys, you can visit purefcom slash about, and you'll see this nice cheat sheet of hotkeys, and there is even a hotkey that is called open source. Yeah, we are the open source fans. Woo! Okay, the next minor feature that I wanted to show really quickly anyway is how to export scenes. Well, obviously we can save and load the PureRef files, 
like the project files, but exporting scenes is a little bit different. Basically, this means that we make a snapshot of the entire canvas, and let's see how it works. Save, export, scene, then you just type in the name, you will see the export scene pop up with the resolution, and that is a tricky moment because if you have a pretty large canvas, it will be a heck of a task to fit it in some reasonable resolution. Man, it will take some time. For example, in case of this particular file, I needed to crank it up to 20 by 20 k and even then you can see how awful it looks when zoomed in. Well, of course it depends on what you're trying to do. If you just want to export the PNG, then draw something on top of it and share it with your peers without caring too much about uh, the final resolution, uh, it will be alright. Maybe, I don't know, you want to illustrate some complex thing and you want to take it to create a background, outline something important, then uh, send it over to your client and ask something. Then you can definitely use this feature. Okay, before exploring the other way of sharing images, let's talk about auto-reloading. I think I invented this feature and nobody else has thought about it. Right, the point is, if you have embed local images in save file, checkbox disabled, and you have your scene saved to disk, you can do wonderful thing. Namely, you can go ahead and replace the source images on the hard drive with some new images. For example, you can re-render it, and then you basically reboot this scene uh, to refresh the files. I find it extremely useful if you have to re-render and refresh files all the time, and you don't even have to learn more about it by watching the Render Burst tutorial right now on my channel. That's not important, you can forget about it. And learn how to embed images for sharing instead. To turn on embedding images into the Pure file, uh, go over to the user preferences, then click on this embed local images and save file checkbox, and basically you're good to go. Now you can just share the Pure file itself, because now it contains all the images. The obvious drawback is now the f this file, for example, is 34 megabytes because it has all the images embedded. But on the other hand, it's nothing in our digital age. At least we can drop it to Google Drive and share the link. But wait, uh, the fourth wall has been broken again. And what do we have here? Embed images, save on export scenes. And I almost run out of space on my Google Drive. What the hell is going on? But all jokes aside, you can get a shareable link and share it with anyone you want to share it with. And, uh, you know, I can click any button here, like, anytime. Alright folks, we are 13 minutes into the tutorial, I appreciate you. Now let's talk about adding notes. One more thing that I love doing within PureRef is turning everything into kind of a presentation by adding the graphical elements. And these are just images, but you can also add notes by pressing Ctrl N. These are pretty self-explanatory, you can type in any text, uh, change the text color and stuff like that. On the other hand, there is practically no customization options, uh, that's why I do it this way. To get more stylish text, I mean, I jump over to Krita or Gimp, type in the text, style the heck out of it, and then, you guessed it, <laughs> print screen and Ctrl V to paste, uh, C to crop, and everybody will go, how did you add such stylish text in PureF? And you will be like, <laughs> Talking about styles, PureF has some built-in customization options and templates. For example, you can scrub through different styles or looks by pressing Alt 2 for the light theme, Alt 1 for the dark one, and Alt 3 to set a glass theme, uh, which is pretty interesting because it makes the background transparent. A tricky part of it is that it still consumes the mouse input, so if you want to make it really transparent, even for mouse events, you need to enable this dreadful option called transparent to mouse, which I don't recommend doing. Or at least try not to panic when you accidentally screw it up. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching this stuff, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Go ahead and download PureRef from their website, the link is in the description. Also press this red button to subscribe and uh, please make sure to let me know if you know any more cool tools for organizing and viewing images. Okay, drink more coffee and we'll change the world of computer graphics. And, oh, and by the way, take a look at my headphones, absolutely new shiny not this crap